Software developer, you are a fighter. You've trained for this. You have won challenges that lesser humans have called unwinnable. And as you sharpened your skills, do you know how Jenkins prepared for today? We transformed the way we deliver software. We brought forth new powers to help you vanquish the obstacles you face every day. Powers that help you with new, scalable, continuous delivery for Kubernetes. Powers to help you optimize Jenkins for the cloud. Powers that get you closer to fully automated Jenkins configuration. Powers that give you continuous delivery for Jenkins itself. Powers that give you the speed and agility you need to deliver the world's software. With Jenkins transformed, our mission is a success. Please welcome to the stage CloudBee's Chief Technology Officer and Creator of Jenkins, Kosuke Kawaguchi. Wow. This never gets old for me. So, uh, <laughs> um, so I love this show because I always get to talk about all the exciting things that's happening in the Jenkins community. And speaking of sharing what's going on in the community, I wanted to recognize those 10 people. They were selected as Jenkins ambassadors because of their passion and then energy to share what's going in the community to amplify. Basically, they are doing what I'm doing, except they are better. Now, if you share the same passion, or if you know somebody who shares the same passion, please go up. I mean, please nominate yourself from Jenkins I website. We are still looking for more ambassadors. And most of these folks, they are actually walking around in this conference, wearing the Jenkins ambassador outfit. So if you see them in this venue, go up and talk to them, and then they encourage them, and then ask them what's going on in the Jenkins community. So like I said, I love the show. Now, but this year was the most difficult year for me to put together this slide deck. And because if you ask me why, it's because there's a lot of things that's going on in the Jenkins community right now. Last year, I made a pitch that our world, the software development world, is evolving rapidly. Right? So we at the Jenkins project has been trying to keep up the game and then creating a lot of interesting efforts transforming Jenkins itself so that it can give you all the necessary superpowers to go through this important evolution. And not only one project, whopping five projects are going on. So in the given time that I have, I wanted to walk through some of these projects, and you hear more about this project in the rest of the conference. So the first one I'm going to start with is the Jenkins pipeline. This was perhaps the first transformational project we took on in the Jenkins project, I think at this point, three or four years ago. And since then, it has become incredible, this bread and butter of the, uh, the place where people run automations. More and more people are picking up this pipeline, and then its growth has been amazing. So because it has become such an important part of the foundation of Jenkins, we obviously keep improving this one bug fix at the time, one pull request at the time. But we are also looking for the places to do more leapfrog, like a major jump, transformational changes into this pipeline. So for example, we are seriously looking into redoing the deep cuts of the pipeline execution engine. And then that gives you 
isolations, better error tolerance, scalability, all that capabilities, while at the same time, for us, the Jenkins community, reducing the amount of code we have to maintain and write. So that's a great thing we are working on. Speaking of a foundational change, a system, I also wanted to touch on the blue ocean. The way I see it, my pitch to the Jenkins project is that we got the two important missions for the blue ocean. One is that, you know, this, ever since the blue ocean has launched, we've seen tremendous success. So what does it take to get Ignite the second rocket of the bo I mean, second booster of this rocket. What does it take to grow this product even further? The way I see it, I think it's by adding extensibility to Blue Ocean so that the rest of the community can build on top of this and then add more useful information so that more, uh, the, more of the things you can do, you can stay within Blue Ocean and less in the, the old UI. So that's the first of the pitch. The second of the pitch is I think it's time for Blue Ocean to stop being a separate project. Right? If you think about things like a plugin manager, dashboard, I don't know, scripting console, none of these have distinctive name because it has became an integral part of Jenkins. I think it's a time has come for Blue Ocean to do the same. It should just become the part of the Jenkins and then stop losing its separate identity. And then that's why I did not call out for Blue Ocean in the superpower. It's very much here with us, but it's, become, it's going to be a part of us going forward more closely. The next superpower I wanted to talk about is Jenkins Evergreen. And this is a radical simplification of Jenkins. All right, let's see. Thank you. Um, so, this is an effort that we started at about the beginning of this year because the continuous delivery keeps getting more and more mainstream, and then it has become, it's becoming more and more the daily part of the developer's life. So what that means is the bar of the simplicity, ease of use, ease of administration, all that is raising rapidly. So the answer from the Jenkins project to keep up with that is the evergreen. So what are we trying to do here? So with Jenkins Evergreen, what we are trying to do is to build a pre-assembled Jenkins distribution with batteries included, so to speak. So I've been making a pitch to the community that we should aim for something that the new user can pick up and then get productive within five minutes and five clicks. And it's not just about the onboarding experience. Once you start using Evergreen, you should be able to get, keep using Jenkins and keep getting updates without constant babysitting, constant administration overhead. And then so it pays the dividend in terms of the benefit that you get. So in order to do that, what I think we need to do is to look at the Jenkins from a little different angle. Because traditionally, at the Jenkins community, we made a deal with we draw a line around the core, so to speak, and then a whole bunch of plugins around it. And that was how we thought about this. But now I think we need to look at this a little differently. We need to think about what modern continuous integration and continuous delivery needs in terms of the functionality. And that probably includes things like GitHub support, Docker support, and so on. And then we, the Jenkins community, need to assemble the right set of bits. Some of those are in plugin, some of those are in the core, and then create a brighter line around those bigger features. And that's what matters to the users. And then one of the benefits of doing that is by doing that, we can provide a better, more guided path to success. We can provide more sane defaults, a lot less automatic configuration based on the environment, a lot less manual configurations. And then by putting more sensible features of the Jenkins that we are building like lately, and then deprecate the older parts of the Jenkins that made sense maybe 10 years ago, but not anymore, and then that allows us to provide this guardrail on both parts of the Jenkins. People don't have to worry about how to get going to become productive. They just fall, naturally use the software that leads to the success. So that's what we are aiming with Evergreen. Another important part of the, um, the uh, Jenkins Evergreen is that the, it's the upgrade is the automatic, meaning we're going to take away, we're gonna be, it's going to be on us to upgrade everything inside the brighter line and then we will deliver that as a set of bits together, and then you always get the constantly updated bits, kind of like how Google Chrome gives you always up-to-date functionalities. 
Now, this idea of Jenkins upgrading itself might feel a little bit scary to new users, I mean, to, to those of you who are using Jenkins for a while. But I truly believe that this is a better way to deliver better Jenkins faster. Because if you think about it, you'll be running the exact same set of configuration that we tested, and it's also the same set of configuration that everyone else is running. So there's definitely a safety number. Plus, these instances, Jenkins Evergreen is connected. What that means is contributors to the Jenkins project is looking at what's going on out there statistically. So when we roll out the new change, and if we notice that something bad is going on, then we can detect that probably before most of you get to notice that. And then we can take a corrective actions. And then your instance, keeps, your instance will keep running. And this, on top of all the additional depths in defense that we are building, meaning if the rollback, I mean, if the upgrade fails, we have a mechanism to snapshot the data. We have mechanism to automatically roll back. And then these things would allow us to allow you to keep moving. And at the same time, we get to learn the valuable lessons from all the things that's going on. So if anything, this is very much bringing the idea of continuous delivery to the Jenkins development itself. And of all the community out there, we should be the one that's, you know, that's going to be preaching this. Right? So with all these additional enhancements, with Evergreen, what we are trying to turn to um, is going to create more the exciting, more boring, safe, but faster travel, kind of like how commercial aviation is. Because you, you don't think much about when you hop onto the airplane, but you're actually going pretty fast in the air to the point that if something bad happens, it kills everyone. But you don't think about that, right? right? So that's a world that we are trying to get to. So Evergreen is great not just for the new users, but also for the experienced Jenkins users. And then continuing on that same theme, Jenkins Evergreen, I mean, I'm sorry, the configurations code is another exciting project that has been going on for this one about a year and a half, I would say, that's been getting a great traction. So in order to help you understand what the configuration uh, uh, code is, I want you to think about the world where you can apply same change, con uh, change control practice to the Jenkins configuration itself. Right? You can develop a change as a git commit, and then you can review those in the, uh, with your team, and then you can roll those out. And then if you discover that something is bad with that change, you feel comfortable backing that out. It would be, wouldn't it be nice if you can do that? Or what if Jenkins stops being a snowflake, meaning you understand every part of how Jenkins configuration is put together because there's a record of who made what configuration change when for what purposes. So every time you're making changes, you know that, that, you know, the, you know that you're not breaking some existing stuff for unknown reasons, or you don't have these pockets of things that you don't understand. Or what if you can safely roll back the failed upgrade because you keep the exact versions of the Jenkins and its plugins all the way back to the history at any given point in time? Or what if you can cookie cutter the exact same Jenkins instance as many times as you need, so each time a new team comes on board, you can give them exactly pre-configured Jenkins instance that meets how your organization does the work, and in that way, people can get productive right off the bat. So these are the superpowers that the configuration as code project is aiming to provide. And you know, for the, there's, they've already made a great progress. So you can do, what you can do is you can write the configuration, Jenkins configuration like this in a YAML file, and then put that into the Git repositories. And then all you have to do is to launch a Docker container with this configuration file. And then it, Jenkins always comes up in a known predictable state. And then you know, the making change is as easy as making a Git commit or rolling back or whatever. And this effort is very much happening at the moment. They have just released version 1.0. The reaction in the community has been amazing. And the, in the contributor summit yesterday, there was a large circle of people talking about this effort. Another thing I like about this effort is it exemplifies the power of the open source community. Because this is an effort that's 
the, 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 this is an effort where the Pragma, the company, and the Cloud Visa company has decided to collaborate to provide the kernel of the bandwidth. We are the leaders of the effort. And then around those, the lots of different contributors from different parts of the world came together. And it's that collective group of people and their collective interest in driving this forward is what led, finally allowed us, the people in the community, to get this project this far. Whereas some other previous attempts in this space didn't pan out as well. So this is an awesome project that I think is already useful, quite useful, and then they are looking forward to provide more better future. So I hope you have a chance to try this out soon. So moving right on to the next superpower, that's Cloud Native Jenkins. So what Cloud Native Jenkins is trying to do is to create a Jenkins that runs for itself, right? If you are being a Jenkins administrator, you, know, you might have some traumatic experience. Now imagine, what if you can get out from the office always 5 o'clock in the afternoon or in Friday, and people are never going like, to hunt you down for uh, the Jenkins being out or like, the people getting blocked for their release processes because the, this plugin or that plugin is not working. What if you don't have to worry about that and Jenkins keeps running for itself? Or what if when you start running Jenkins, you don't really have to do any upfront provision, uh, provisioning of the, uh, you know, the compute or storage or anything. You can just deploy it like, casually. And then as your team keeps hiding all more workload, or as more teams, start, more, more teams start joining these Jenkins instances, all you have to do is just pay a bigger check, paycheck, I mean, pay a bigger check to Amazon, or Microsoft, or Google that's providing the cloud. And then it just whole thing keeps scaling until your entire organization is running the entire automation on this single cluster of Jenkins. What if we could do that? That, I think, would be pretty awesome. And it's such a convincing value proposition that this is exactly what we are working on in the context of the Jenkins project. So that's the effort that uh, we call the Cloud Native Jenkins effort. And it's a journey, but I think we can get there if we remove the file system as a current data storage and also the fact that Jenkins today is a single process as you know, there's a single process master that is as a single point of failure. We can remove those, um, and then we can turn Jenkins into a more distributed system. So this is also an work that actually has been going on for some time now. And uh, some of the work is actually already in your Jenkins, you might know or not. So the first part of the effort that went, went underway is the allowing you to archive artifacts initially with Amazon S3, and then, as with everything else in the Jenkins community, these things are extensible. So it's really just a matter of adding more, writing more plugins and like, connecting to the similar services in other cloud providers. And this effort has already shipped a while ago. Next one that's being worked on as we speak is to move the log files, the build logs, to the log managed data services in the cloud, and then again initially targeting Amazon's CloudWatch, but the same story. So these two they, uh, together, they constitute the biggest portion of your data storage in the Jenkins home. So right off the gate, you get a much cheaper storage cost and a better scalability, performance, that sort of things if you're running large scale Jenkins. And as we make more progress, I think you'll get only better from here. So the next stop from here, what we are trying to work on um, is to create a new distribution of Jenkins that is more cloud native. So the idea here is we want to create a flavor of Jenkins that's distributed and highly, therefore highly available running on the Kubernetes, the modern uh, platform of choice for many. And it should be able to use Jenkins as a kind of a serverless function as a service style build engine that you know, comes up for the duration of the build, and it's gone. So you can already see why this kind of architecture provides a lot higher scalability and isolation. 
and then continuously delivered with the technology of Evergreen so that you get all the benefits of these other things that I described earlier. So this might sound like a major effort, and then, but it might be, I think it's actually coming sooner than you might think it is, because if we carefully choose the right initial target, you know, in other words, instead of trying to, uh, trying to solve every Jenkins workflow that every Jenkins user is putting, if we focus on some specific use cases, for example, around pipeline, and then not providing some, like a leave out to some key pieces, like not the, offering the user interface in the initial round, then we can provide, um, we can get there a whole lot more quickly. And I know for the fact that some of the Jenkins users have already been running Jenkins in this manner, so that gives me a confidence. And then we can add back things that the people have, like the UI and all the other stuff over time, and then make this more and more useful for a broader number of people. So this effort has been, uh, like I said, already undergoing, and then it's creating incredible excitement in the Jenkins community and the broader industry. So as a place to drive this effort, um, we are putting the, uh, in the community, we organize the Cloud Native SIG, a special interest group, and this is a place in which contributors interested in this effort are coming together to work on this. Now, as a CTO of CloudBees, I'm very excited to say our people are a critical part of this cloud native suit. But like everything else in the Jenkins community, this needs to be a collaborative effort that involves other people from other skill sets. So in order to show you why, how this collaboration is going on, I wanted to bring two key members of this SIG on stage to show you that. So please welcome Vic from Google and PC from Microsoft. Hey. Hi. Hi. Thank you. So, Vic, I know that you've been a very passionate advocate of Jenkins. I've been watching your, all your presentation in admiration, admirations. Now, if you can tell us a bit about why Cloud Native and Jenkins is important to Google. Yeah, I mean, I've been using Jenkins for a long time now, from a you know, time where I was on-prem with fixed infrastructure to now helping customers over the last three years to scale out and kind of hit the parallelism that I never thought was possible. Uh, with that, you start to see some things that we can do better. Uh, at Google, we've seen the, the power of open ecosystems with Kubernetes and the power of cloud-native uh, architectures. So we're excited to help with taking Jenkins to the next level with cloud-native. Great. And PC. I know that you and your team have been working in the Jenkins community for a good long while. <laughs> you guys have been uh, the uh, great maintainers of the number of plugins that make Jenkins great with Azure. So I really appreciate all the work that your team has been doing. The same question to you. Why is the Jenkins and Cloud Native important to Microsoft? Thank you, Kosuke. Um, I'm very excited to be here today. So thanks again for having us. Um, so I was talking to a friend and I uh, told him that I'll be in your keynote and talk about cloud native Jenkins. So I started telling him that, hey, you know, it's about letting our customers have the freedom of choice. And he just stopped me and went, I know that. You gave me a Azure Loves open source t-shirt. <laughs> what is Cloud Native Jenkins, and why do you care? Um, so I just asked him, uh, what happens if your Jenkins master goes down? And he went, um, may have to skip lunch, but it will be up and running again. So wouldn't it be great if high availability is push button ready, uh, easy? Mm -hmm. That's one of the many things we are trying to achieve. Um, we will start by externalizing storage to Azure. There is really a lot to do. And um, if you have any other ideas and would like to contribute, come join us. I think it's high time to make Jenkins not just cloud native, but Azure native as well. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I'm really looking forward to your productive collaborations with you guys. Oh, and in that excitement, I forgot to We'll push forward the slides, so my apologies. Um, but uh, yeah, so like I, like I said, there's been a great collaboration going on in the Jenkins community, and I'm super excited, and then so, so should you. So the last but not least, the final superpower that I wanted to talk about is Jenkins X. So 
if you look at around in the industry, I think there's clearly what I think of as a new cloud operating system is emerging, right? It's creating this common platform for all the clouds uh, to cloud providers that can provide. And then it kind of got the middleware like functionalities that making it useful for building modern applications. And above all, I really enjoy that it's got the extensibility. It really reminds me of a uh, Jenkins in many ways. And then, you know, the name of this new cloud operating system, as you probably all know, is Kubernetes. So I know that a lot of development teams are pausing and then trying to understand how to harness this new tool for their own benefit. Now, I'm a technologist at heart, so I really enjoy, in a way, like picking up these new technologies. But let's be real, it's also work, right? So the way I see it, when you new technology like Kubernetes, you need to learn those. So you have to install and operationalize Kubernetes. And I know for the fact that that's not the easiest work in the park. And then you have to survey this rapidly evolving ecosystem and then figure out the right tools and services to combine into doing something useful for you. And of, of course, you have to move your application to the containers if you haven't done already. And then you have to figure out how to deploy those containers in the Kubernetes. Are you gonna, there are multiple ways to go about doing these things. And then you have to wire up the, all the automation around everything so that when the commit happens here, stuff happens in the middle, and then the app gets running somewhere else. So that's a lot of learning to do and figuring out to do. And in the, it's not just the tools and technology that you need to figure out. You need to figure out the best practices of what the right continuous delivery process is in this world. You know, you might have heard of this new thing called GitOp. Is it the time for you to embrace that, or is it still a fringe thing? How do I deal with the secrets in the production, like a different bodies in different environments? All of these things need to be figured out. And then, even if you do that, you still have to think about, always have to wonder about, did I do it right? Did I miss something out? You know, because I, you always have this fear of missing out. So the way I see it, you can have fun tinkering with technology like that, or you could pick up Jenkins X and just get productive. And because the vision of the Jenkins X is instead of asking you to figure out all these things, it's people in the community who spend years knowing and advocating and breathing the Kubernetes to figure out what's the right best practices what are the good tools to put together to, and how to continuously deliver cloud-native applications. And here, I'm not just talking about the builds and tests. And it, I'm talking about the entire development cycle that spans from the uh, code reviews to promotion to apps and the productions. So you know, in order to achieve these best practices, the people in the community are going to figure out the right best-of-the-breed software in the ecosystem to achieve that and then put them all behind a very pleasant high-level command line interface so that developers, your developers, can be interacting with a much more higher level abstract languages. And this command line tool is going to work with tools behind the scene to make the right automation happen. And then what the key to enable this is the opinionated way you know, these, these, these best practices of how to do things, so that's encoded and embodied in this Jenkins X. And then the, the end result of doing that uh, is that you now Kubernetes is finally becomes the means to the end, because your actual goal is to write awesome applications for your target customers, not learning the new technologies. Technologies is still just a means to the end. So that's the mission, the vision of the Jenkins X. And the great thing about the Jenkins X is it's not like we had to reinvent all these best practices out of thin air. Right? It's more or less a convergence of existing practices that the industry has collectively discovered in the past years. And, then, and so in some sense, when you pick up Jenkins X, you feel utterly old and familiar because everything feels right at home at the place where you expect them to be. But it's also utterly new, because it's letting you harness the latest innovations in the technology landscape. And that's always exciting. So one way I often think of as the difference between Jenkins and Jenkins X 
it, Jenkins is like driving a car. It lets you get anywhere in the world, wherever you want to drive to. You just need to turn at the right corner. You don't necessarily even have to know the destination. You can figure things out as you go. So that's kind of like a Jenkins, and that covers this incredible breadth of the use case. Now, Jenkins X is like a high-speed rail. It only gets to one destination, which is a modern web application development. But that's a very big city. It's a very common destination everybody's trying to go. So, so long as that's your destination, again, you don't really need to know where it is. You just need to show up at the station and hop on to this train and then sit back and relax and let the train take you to the destination in no time. So that's an awesome value prop for the people who are trying to get there. So on that note, I was quickly going through the five superpowers coming to your Jenkins already and soon in the future. The great thing about these five superpowers is that they are designed to work together. So for example, the configurations code and Cloud Native Jenkins are, trying, are collectively making Jenkins more stateless, and the one couldn't do it without the other. Blue Ocean and the configurations code is also like kind of like covering the flank of each other because the configurations code is taking away the big user interface surface of Jenkins away from Jen uh, away so that the Blue Ocean can focus on smaller part of the area. Cloud Native Jenkins and Jenkins X are in a similar symbiotic relationship. Jenkins X is showing how uh, Jenkins should be used, should be morphed into in the world of Kubernetes. And or the Evergreen and Jenkins X together is making Jenkins appealing to a whole new set of users who we previously haven't approached before. So all these like, convergence of the effort uh, that originally individually started is collectively, I think, painting a future where Jenkins is growing in such a way that it redefines the meaning of Jenkins itself. Right? It's not just core and plugins that used to make up Jenkins anymore. Now the mission of the Jenkins is much bigger. We are trying to cover a much bigger surface of what's necessary to help make developers productive. Now, these are all ambitious goals and big projects. It's uh, taking significant efforts and collaborations. And as, like I said uh, in the Cloud Native Jenkins, I'm very happy as a CTO of CloudBees that CloudBees is putting a lot of effort in many of these efforts. But it also, again, has to be a community-wide effort. And uh, here, I don't just mean people writing code behind this project. Obviously, those are important. But I also mean each and every one of the users, because what you need to do is to, you need to pick up these new superpowers that we are giving to you. You're not going to be using Jenkins the same way that you've been using the past few years. And then as you pick up these new superpowers and then try to put them into use, you'll discover things that we didn't anticipate. And it's your job to tell us, the people in the community, how it's going for you. And in that feedback cycle, we collectively can create a much better tool. So the great thing about this conference is that people who are leading these efforts and people who are going to be using these things, you, are working on the same hallways. So you're going to be seeing, uh, hearing from these leaders where their thoughts are. I want you to go up to them and then tell them what you thought and then keep that feedback cycle going. And that's been what's making Jenkins community great. And I'm, I'm sure that that's also what's going to keep Jenkins great. So on that note, my keynote is done. So thank you very much.